4.8 liter LS, Gen 6 454, same turbo, who makes the most power? In this video, we compared a 4.8 liter, you know, your typical combo, cam, springs, and boost, to a Gen 6 454. Now the 454 had heads, cam, intake, and boost. Sounds like a one-sided competition. But what if we told you both combos were equipped with the same turbo, that dirt cheap $163 eBay GT45? Now who wins? Let's face it, nobody wants to see me stand up here and talk, so let's get right to the results in the comparison between our 4.8 and our 454. Now our first test motor was a 4.8 liter LR4. It was equipped with JE Forge Pistons, 706 heads, and a Stage 2 Turbo Cam from Brian Tooley Racing. We also installed larger injectors and a Holley HP management system. Now we first ran the motor NA, then installed our custom turbo kit. The turbo kit consisted of truck manifolds feeding a custom Y pipe, and of course that eBay GT45 turbo. Now all the boost was sent through a Pro Charger air to water intercooler, and we ran a bunch of different boost levels. So let's check out those results and then get to that bigger 454. Our first test motor was the 4.8 liter, featured forged pistons and a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 2 turbo cam. Other than that, it was basically stock, stock 706 heads with springs. Now, if we take a look at the power output, this 4.8 uh, made 409 horsepower at 6,600 RPM, and over here made 367 foot pounds of torque. So it did pretty well, naturally aspirated, good start, just a cam only 4.8 basically. So now let's take a look at see what happens after we install the GT45 turbo. Got the GT45 turbo and an air to water intercooler. This was at six pounds. So we're about 565 horsepower. Doing well, a little GT45 turbo is doing good. So here's what happens when we went from six pounds to eight pounds. Picked up power everywhere as we expect. Then here's what happens when we jumped up to 10 pounds. Again, same kind of solid gain. Here's what happens when we went to 12 pounds. As you can see, each successive step up and boost showed some pretty good gains. We're looking good. Now here's what happened when we ran the last boost run, 14 pounds, and you can see this area in here, there's a little bit of a dip, we could tune that out. Uh, that was actually a little bit of a drop in timing in that particular area. But we could tune that out and make that straight just like everything else, that's not the point. Um, it's easy to make power. And with our GT45, we made, on our 4.8, we made a peak of 715 horsepower, and 685 foot-pounds of torque. So now that we've taken a look at the horsepower and torque curves with this turbocharged 4.8 with the GT45, let's take a look at the boost and back pressure curves. Okay, if we take a look at the boost pressure versus back pressure curves on our 4.8 liter equipped with the GT45 turbo, we see that out here at the top, out here near the power peak, we've got 7.3 pounds of boost pressure and 11.6 pounds of back pressure. So that's at a very low boost level. Let's see what happens when we raise the boost. So as we can see, we jumped up in boost, up to about eight and a half pounds, and we jumped up in back pressure to over 13 pounds. And as we see, as we go up in boost, we'll see this, this will continue. So let's go up another couple of pounds. A little over 10 pounds. And then around 15 pounds of back pressure. We go up another couple of pounds. You can see it's starting to climb pretty good. And then our final run, final boosted run, even more. So the interesting thing is that if you if we get rid of the boost curve here, get rid of the boost curve and just look at the back pressure, we see that 
As RPM increases, the back pressure increases. And the relative difference between the back pressure between these different boost levels also increases. So for instance, down here below 3,500 in the last few runs, we had a difference of about one pound of back pressure at the beginning. But out at the top, we had more than two pounds of back pressure difference. So the difference in back pressure increased with RPM. If we compare this to the boost pressure, so we had a rising back pressure curve, despite the fact that we actually had a decreasing boost pressure curve. So boost pressure actually decreased on most of these runs as we went out in RPM, but the back pressure increased. That definitely tells us that there's something going on with the hot side of that turbo and the flow rate of the hot side of that turbo. So now that we've taken a look at the 4.8 liter, let's take a look at what happened when we installed this GT45 turbo on the larger 454 big block Chevy. After running the 4.8 liter with our eBay GT45 turbo, it was time for the big block. Now our Gen 6 454 featured a stock bottom end, a mild comp cam, dart heads, and an Edelbrock intake. Like the 4.8 liter, we ran it first naturally aspirated, then installed that eBay GT45 turbo and Pro Charger air water intercooler. So how did it do? Let's check out the results. If we take a look at the power output of our modified 454, Nice little flat torque curve there. Our 454 stock bottom end Gen 6 motor with the head scam and intake made 510 horsepower and 487 foot pounds of torque. You can see, uh, you know, wasn't really wanting to rev very high, but it made peak power out in the 56, 5700 RPM range. Peak torque, this is a single plane manifold, so it helped bring the peak torque a little bit higher out. So if we take a look, here's an interesting comparison. We take this NA454 and compare it to our NA4.8. Look at that, no big surprise. I mean, the, the 7.4 liter motor made more power than the 4.8 liter, which isn't a big surprise. And the reason that I bring this up is because it definitely plays a part in what happened after we added boost. So if we go back to our 454, now we are going to add boost from our the same GT45 turbo that we ran on the 4.8. Now if we take a look at the power curves, I know everyone's going to focus on this area out here. Um, a couple more degrees of timing could have leveled that off, but the thing was already done. Um, you know, the power peak was really close there anyway. But all we wanted to do really was demonstrate the differences in um, boost pressure and back pressure on these two combinations, on these two wildly different combinations using the same turbo. So this thing made uh, 707 horsepower and 756 foot-pounds of torque. So it made a lot more torque than it did horsepower. And we didn't run this at a bunch of different boost levels. We, we stayed here and for a good reason. Once we take a look at the boost curves and the back pressure curves, you'll understand why. So a little over 700 horsepower and 756 foot pounds up from a little over you know, 510, 511 horsepower. So somewhere in that range um, with that GT45 turbo. Now that we've taken a look at the power output, Let's take a look at the boost curves generated by that GT45 on this 454. If we now take a look at the boost and back pressure curves generated by that GT45 turbo on our 454, we see this. So, even at the start of the run, which is down 3,600 or so, we see nine pounds of boost pressure and almost 11 pounds of back pressure. And you can see this gets worse and worse as we go up in RPM. So once we get out near, near the power peak, we say 8.3 pounds of boost pressure. So we had a slightly following boost pressure curve, but 22 and a half pounds of back pressure. Yep, you heard that right. 8.3 pounds of boost 
and 22.5 pounds of back pressure. And that was that difference that we were showing you, the difference in the horsepower curves between the two naturally aspirated motors. The 454 made a lot more power everywhere naturally aspirated. So it made a lot more back pressure everywhere once we added that same turbo. And, and that's why running these turbos on the right size motor makes all the difference in the world. So now let's take a look, if we compare this boost pressure and back pressure curve to the run on the 4.8 liter, here's what we see. Oh, let me show you something a little bit better here. I'll change the colors on this. I'm gonna show you these one at a time. So let's let the, this is the boost pressure. The boost pressure between the 4.8 liter, which is up here in red, took obviously a lot more boost pressure to, to get over 700 horsepower with that 4.8 liter. This is the boost pressure curve, the blue down here on the, four point, or on the 454, took a lot less boost pressure there. Both of them, as you can see, falling boost curves, and that's a function of the effect of the wastegate when we started having elevated back pressure. So now let's take a look at the back pressure curves generated by both these boost pressure curves. Remember, the 454 had much less boost pressure than the um, smaller 4.8, but check out what happens when we look at the back pressure curves. So even though the 454 was only running eight pounds of boost, it had a lot more back pressure, 22 and a half pounds of back pressure. So this thing was running, the 4.8 was running considerably less boost pressure, but still had only 19 pounds of back pressure. So a much better ratio. So now let's take a look at the conclusion with all of this and figure out why we sometimes want to run a smaller motor with the same turbo, or better yet, size the turbo properly for the even bigger motor. Okay guys, what's the takeaway? What do we learn from this comparison between our 4.8 liter and the 454? Well, for a lot of guys, it's gonna be this. Don't mess with a turbo 4.8, even if you have a big block. But the reality is something different. For any given turbo size, sometimes it's easier to make more power with a smaller motor than it is with a bigger motor. And the reason for that is the back pressure produced by the bigger motor. But if we take one step back even further, we see this. You need to size the turbo correctly, not just for your power output, but for the motor you use to get there. You see, a 1,000 horsepower 4.8 liter will require a different turbo than a 1,000 horsepower 6 liter, 7 liter, or even 454. So make sure to choose the turbo based on the power output and the combination you use to get there, and good things will happen. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and most of all, make some comments. Let me know what you thought about this video and what you want to see in future videos. Thanks for watching.